Hello, my name is Ali and welcome to my channel. We are back with Mystic Destiny Serendipity of Aeons Takumi's route. Let's go. I'll try to ask around discreetly, but don't hold out any hope. My whole body feels cold. I feel like I'm not even in my body at all. My mind races a mile a minute. What have I done? What's going to happen to me? What happens to an immortal without a soul? Takumi looks strangely angry and ready to storm out of the place. He gets up, nearly knocking over the bar stool, but he stops when his eyes land on me. His expression softens immediately. He sighs and looks at Shinji. Ah, thanks, Shinji. I'm going to take her home now. I think we need some time to process what you said. Yeah, no problem. And if it gets any worse... Let me know, all right? Yeah, come on, Munchie. Taku stands up and pulls me by the wrist until I get up and leads me away. It barely registers that we're leaving, or even moving. I feel like I'm locked inside my own head, screaming and screaming for the help that might never come. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? My thoughts run as if on a loop. I don't remember leaving or the walk back to Aurelia's house. Once we get inside, it's obvious that Aurelia isn't home. Takumi rummages through the cabinets with shaking hands, trying to pick a drink for himself. He pulls out a bottle of something and takes a swig of it. He's underage. He shouldn't... I sigh. <sighs> oh, you know what? Whatever. If he's old enough to be doing what he does at night, he can at least have a drink without me saying anything. Taku pulls out a pair of crystal glasses from another cabinet and turns to me. Want a drink? I don't normally drink, but yeah, I think I really need a drink right now. Taku nods and quickly pours me a glass of amber-colored liquid and holds it out to me. With shaky hands, I reach out and take it, but the glass slips right out of my grasp. It shatters as it hits the wood floor. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll go and get, get a, a towel. I run off to the bedroom without waiting for a reply. I look around every, everywhere around the bedroom. They could have gotten rid of one of the rounds. <laughs> Where did I leave my towel? I look under the bed. I know I left it here somewhere. I, my eyes start to water, and tears begin to stream from my eyes like a flood. I sink down to the floor in frustration as the tears roll down my cheeks. What the hell am I doing? I hear footsteps, and when I look up, I see Takumi appear in the doorway, simply staring down at me. My first instinct is to look away, to try and hide my tears. But it's Takumi. With him, it's okay somehow. He, his quiet voice echoes across the room. How could... How could you just risk yourself like that? In truth, I'd feared this conversation ever since I learned about death magic. I don't respond. I can't. So I just look away. Takumi walks up to me and kneels down. He grabs me by the shoulders and forces me to look up at him. He looks directly into my eyes and asks again, how could you risk yourself like that? I focus on him and my own frustration out his wait. I focus on him and my own frustration at him finally boils over. Couldn't I ask the same of thing of you? Don't you go out and risk yourself for Yasu every night? What about all that crap you shoot up before missions? And the cigarettes you said were just medicinal? Taku stares at me and then backs away. I push myself up to stand, taking my chance to go on the offensive now. That can't be good for your health. Are those things even safe for humans? Taku doesn't answer, or perhaps he can't. You're damaging your body to be able to compete with the competition, aren't you? It's basically the same thing, isn't it? Since you're still just a human... What you did wasn't even comparable to me risking my life. You're destroying your soul. I had to. I needed to be able to keep up with you so I could find Shizuka. 
I wouldn't, it wouldn't have mattered if I just was able to get back to normal. I, I thought that way anyway. And besides, I, I wanted to protect you too. We look at each other, breathing heavily. I break our eye contact, looking out the window instead. Even though I believe in what I said, I feel a little guilty for yelling at him. Takumi suddenly reaches out and grabs my hand. In one smooth motion, he tugs my arm and I stumble into his chest. Taku steadies me, pulling me into his strong arms. I'm too surprised to do anything but stand there. I'm terrified, and I don't want to lose you or Yasu. But it feels like I'm about to lose both of you. Huh? Yasu, he's... I'm stunned when tears fill Taku's eyes. Oh, my heart, my heart. <laughs> They're about to let him go soon. Take him off of life support. Oh my god, my heart. My parents, they can't afford to take care of him anymore. What? Then, Nyoko, now it all makes sense. But why now? When we are so close to figuring out what happened to him, Takumi doesn't seem to have any answers for me. Stunned, all my strength leaves me and I relax into his arms. We hold each other as tears quietly flow, neither really knowing what to say. And then Takumi pulls back, away from me. I need to go. Go somewhere. Get some air. He mumbles so quietly that I almost don't hear it. Takumi starts to move away, his warmth leaving me, but I grab his hand and look down, pulling at him. Please don't go right now. I don't think either one of us should be alone. I just... I don't want to be alone thinking about all this shit. I'm... scared. I'm really scared. For Yasu, for me, for you. I look up at Takumi. I mean, when my soul's gone, will I just be left alive and empty? But empty? What happens when an immor immortal soul fades away anyway? Takumi looks down at me, our eyes not straying from each other. He leans down and kisses my forehead. It'll be okay. I promise I'll help you. I'll figure it out. Please don't cry. I won't let anything bad happen to you. I look up and gently pull his face down to mine. Do we kiss? I hesitate for a moment, looking into his beautiful violet eyes, our noses almost touching. Ooh, she does kiss him. We both bring our lips together. It starts out as a tender kiss, but quickly turns into one of need. Ooh, oh my goodness, are we going to get pretty um intense right now? <laughs> I wrap my arms around his neck and pull him back to the bed without breaking the kiss. I sit down, pulling him with me. Takumi places his hand on me and slowly begins to move his fingers up my body. Ooh... His lips on mine, so hungry for me, not giving me a chance for breath. Clothes slide off to the floor and are fast forgotten about. Yep, we're going to do the deed. That night, there aren't any worries or thoughts of the future. We live only in the moment, desperately taking in every ardent second without regrets. Man, they do this early on. Well, we're already on chapter 9. I think there's 14. 15 chapters altogether. I think the final chapter is like the 15th chapter. I'm not sure. I don't know. Chapter 9, Solitude. When I wake up and turn in bed, I find that Takumi is nowhere to be seen. I sit up and look around. His clothes are nowhere in sight. Takumi? No response. I wrap the sheet around myself and get up. Taku? I quickly check the bathroom, but he isn't there. Wrapped in a sheet, I peek outside the bedroom door and see Aurelia there. Our eyes meet for just a second. Eep! I duck back inside in an instant. I try not to think too much as I go, take, go to take a shower, hoping that Takumi is out in the living room. I hope Takumi is with Aurelia. I ducked out so quick, I didn't get a good look at anything else. Ugh. I also hope she didn't actually see me like this. She's definitely, she'll, she, she, uh, she definitely know what's up then. 
When I get dressed and come out, I finally get a good look around and see that Takumi is nowhere to be found. And I find that I can't even look Aurelia in the eye. I hope she didn't come back during all of that. Had fun last night? Oh god, why? I'm gonna die. I can't bring myself to say anything at all, or even meet her eyes as she hands me some breakfast. Aurelia just laughs and goes to wash the dishes, but as soon as she turns the tap on, she sighs and turns it right off. She turns back around to face me. Before you ask, I don't know where Takumi is. He hasn't been in the greatest emotional state lately, so he's probably off doing something stupid. My fork falls out of my hand, falling onto the plate with a clatter as I look up to meet her gaze. What? What do you mean? Do you know about all the things Takumi does to himself to stay on top of his game? The drugs he takes are medicinal for supernaturals, but extremely dangerous and toxic to humans. They're just like human drugs. You can take them, but you'll slowly damage your body until you die. My mind turns to the things I yelled at him last night. My stomach feels heavy. He's not satisfied with being human and never has been. And losing to June has been really weighing on him. I was expecting him to leave sooner, but I guess you were keeping him sane. He's probably out seeking some dangerous shit. I wouldn't even bother calling him because when he gets like this, he won't answer. Why? Why now? Was it because of last night? I sigh. I'd seen the signs too, even if I just wanted to pretend I didn't. It's clear that Takumi has some issues from all this. It's understandable though. Doing investigations like these every night takes a toll on you. And I wouldn't bother trying to find him right now. If he doesn't want to be found, he won't be. Aurelia's words, they piss me off because I know they're true. Takumi himself pisses me off. Damn. Ugh. Why did you have to do this now? If that's the case, then I want to go out and search for information on my own. We were getting so close and Yasu doesn't have much time left. And finding Shizuka might be my only chance to saving myself of saving myself from death magic. Where would you start? What would you do? Hmm, well, I quickly go over everything I know in my head. I think the next step lies with June, since he's close with Azucena. I want to know more about him and where I can find him. He could just kill you on sight if he feels like it, you know. Yes, I've, I've seen what he can do, and I suspect that was just a small portion of it anyway, since... He was only fighting a human with no powers, but I don't know what else to do. We settle into a quiet, into quiet as I rack my brain trying to figure out how to keep going without Takumi. Oh, that other June. Hey, Aurelia, you don't happen to know if June has a brother. I do. No, some things. Whoops, I read that wrong, but I will. But it's going to cost you. Of course. All right, I can pay you. How much do you want? We can discuss that later. For now, I'll trust you. But usually payment is up front. June does indeed have a brother, a twin. Naoki, I think. Naoki? Naoki? Yeah. Naoki Okura works as a professor at Hajiwara University. He does? Man, we've never seen him. Interesting. I don't know if he'd know anything about June's activities, but it's possible that they're rumored to be very close. Thank you, Aurelia. Too excited to stop myself, I jump up and hug the tiny sylph. As soon as I let her go, I rush off to get changed and run out to find this Naoki Okira. After asking around Hajiwara, I found out where Naoki's office is. I haven't been back here since that terrible day. The hidden basement itself still shocks me. I'm almost surprised to see it's still here. That this wasn't just a dream. A magical elevator that would only react to supernaturals and bring them down to the basement. 
Who would have imagined such a thing really could really exist? Admittedly, I am a little nervous about getting caught by someone who might remember me, so I keep my hood up as I walk. I'm going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!